Oh yes, hey, hi, this is Philip at the best 3 dcom and uh, I wanted to show you uh, a little bit more about uh, sprites and techniques for working with uh, image arrays or image sequences that you lay out in some sort of a contact sheet. Um, so what I, let me, let me go and uh, store this image here, show you a little bit of the workflow. So here's an image that I painted, and in fact I wanted to show you really from scratch um, you, you may have started with an image that's already in a sprite sheet and you want to turn it into an animation. That's something we can do quite easily here from the animation menu and take that array to an animation. All right, and so what you need to do is tell us how many frames are there along the horizontal x-axis. That's also how many columns there are. Uh, so let's say there are four and there are three rows along the y-axis and uh, now there are some frames that are actually empty here some of these cells are not containing an image and so we might say well there's only a total of 10 images here All right, so how many total number of frames that's typically a maximum of uh, this number times this number but it could be less and in this case it's just 10. Now if I wanted to actually see those two as simply empty frames I can still do that I can put in 11 or let's go to the max and say 12 all right, so that's possible too. And then what it does is it converts that to the animation. And so now you have an animation sequence here with two empty frames. If you change your mind and you decide you don't want those, you can certainly delete those right here. Click on the delete, on the X tool here to delete the current frame. Make sure you're on the right frame here and delete that. So now we have exactly 10 frames and here they are. I wanted to show you how I started creating these in the first place. Um, because there's uh, a couple of uh, little tricks that are quite useful to know. So I'm going to go with, uh, first of all, I'm going to store this. It's always good to have a quick backup copy here, store to disk or store to memory, um, because this might be useful to get back to. And again, um, if, I, if I click on this one here, that was a stored copy I did a little bit earlier. You see that in this one, I also then took it into some more processing and did some radial blur in this case. Uh, whatever you want to do on these images, you can do and then after that you'd like to get it back into a single array with these processed images back put together into that uh, a sprite sheet so <clears throat> for that we will use a tool called doggy fx which is a free plugin uh, by paul wiskowski and uh, what we'll do first is create uh, perhaps a new image a new sprite sheet so i'm going to go right here and uh, not browse through that i'm going to go right here in the file menu create a new image and this one will be, let's say, uh, 400 by 300, right? To give you a, a, an, an example with up to 10 frames that we want to paint with something in there. These could be little uh, stickmen, walking sequence, running sequence, could be some sort of an animated smiley, could be whatever you want to, to draw on a, a series of small images. And um, what we'll do here is create that as a 400 by 300 array. And now the trick is to kind of get a visual reference of where these cells are going to be. Uh, so one thing I want to do is down here on the sidebar, and you may have it on the left side depending on how you configure the layout, right? That's something you can do here under the layout in the view menu uh, and indicate where the sidebar should be uh, there left or right side. All right, so if you scroll down on the sidebar, you'll see a category below the layers and below info. You'll see a category called grids, and under the grids, you'll have some tools that could be like the ruler. Um, it could be some other things like the artist guides, and that's useful if you're the artist who wants some guides on where the different reference points are for your, uh, for your graphic. Uh, but there's also one called the drawing grid and the visible grid. And the drawing grid is not the one you need here. What you do need is the visible grid. That's the one that will actually show you where the grid is. The drawing grid is going to snap to it. Right? So as you're painting, it's kind of snapping to these lines and forcing you to paint just in that area, well, more or less. Uh, that's not what we want here. What we do want is to have a visible indicator of where the grid is but uh, it's not part of the image really, it's just sort of an overlay. So it's a bit tough to see black if your background is black. Um, you will want to, to have a slightly different color for the background there. Um, but one thing you could do certainly is um, enable that grid and then on, there is a maximum size for it too, it's 100. So that's going to work great if you are on relatively small 
uh, sized images or you're going to have to keep in mind that if you want to do 200 by 200 per image frame you're going to have to take these four squares together as one image cell. Uh, in our case here we have uh, exactly what we need here for uh, up to 12 frames in a sprite sheet uh, and we might want to start painting here so I'm going to go with a, a very cheesy thing here just the, the large uh, brush simple brush and put a zero oh, that's too large let's go erase this uh, let's make it a little bit smaller let's take the size down to about this much all right very shaky hand that's a zero don't ask me this is number two three yeah I'm not using a, a, a tablet here so I am excused with my mouse uh, five six seven but the idea is just to have something that distinguishes one frame from the next. And so I'm going to leave these alone. I mean, you could have here perhaps something like A and B or not. That looks too much like, a, like an 8. Let's go and undo that. There you go. So we have these frames. Now these we can convert to an animation like we did before. Um, I'm going to go right here. This is Array to Animation. Right, so once again, this time we'll do the exact number. We'll say we have four, and we have three, and we have ten total of frames. And bingo, so here's our new image sequence. So the next step is to perhaps apply some animation to that. Just before that, we'll take a snapshot. It's always a good habit for that, good practice in your workflow. And, um, and so now you do, I don't know, some blurring or edge. Let's do edge detection this time. Let's do Convolve, Sobel, Edge Detection and apply that to the whole animation, bingo, you're done. So, well, sort of. I mean, there's occasionally there's some edge conditions. It did the edge detection on that. And you may, if you zoom in and you see there's a little bit of uh, gray showing here, you might need to erase that. Just use the right button or the left button to erase to black, sometimes along the bottom. It may look a bit ugly here, but it really isn't in the data array. Uh, but you know do that perhaps on each of the frames and in fact there are some ways to make that a little bit faster too if you look, use the, the fill tool and black is your primary color go to the first frame and let's say you want to erase everything here like this to black but then you don't want to waste your time doing that from one frame to the next what you could do as long as each of these images have enough of a margin on the right edge here, use the Alt key. Press and hold the Alt key and then do this and then it will do this fill rectangle to black on each of the frames. And same thing here. Go like this, Alt key, boom. And it applies that to the entire sequence uh, to, from the current image. So you may need to go back to the very first if this one was missed. All right. But uh, at that point you have probably a fairly decent image sequence and um, we're ready to go and once again store that and then we're ready to uh, take it back into an array. So how do we convert this back to an array? There are probably a couple of ways and let me see just quickly here on the animated brush um, there are some tools if I recall um, ba -dum -bum -bum -bum, animated brush, animated brush, nope not quite here um, I thought we had some other tools somewhere that would take a brush sequence and animate it into an array. Um, array to animate a brush, okay, that's the opposite, all right, so that's not what we're talking about here. But that's another tool that we have too. If you have an array and you want to take it straight into an animated brush, you can pick that up too. Um, so let's talk about <coughs> the plugin from Paul Wiskowski. That's the um, <coughs> the any effects, excuse me, the, the doggy effects, and uh, you can find that under um, third-party plugins, right? So if you, if you go to the main page, click on products, scroll down a little bit along the left side, you'll see under downloads, you'll see third-party plugins, and in there you'll see a couple of third-party plugins, including this one here from Paul Wiskowski for doggy effects. And as of version 1.2, about seven years ago, this one made became a free tool. It is the current latest one, I think, is version 9 point, uh, 1.29. And you can go to um, PJW Production right here, look under Products, find Doggy FX, and uh, here's a whole list of different tools that it contains, including utilities and animation to sprite sheet. And in there, 
um, you'll see the download. So click on that and uh, proceed with that. So that, that file, by the way, if, if we open it simply like this, that file will contain uh, a couple of um, a couple of uh, uh, files in there. This zip contains four files and you simply need to put that into the folder where your current um, dog waffle uh, installation lives, right? If it's Howler under Steam, uh, you simply take these files into a uh, copy and paste them into the um, the Steam apps common do uh, Howler 9.6 or something like that. So wherever you have your dog waffle um, program installed, uh, put these files right in there. Right. And then at that point, when you restart Howler, or if you have it already running, you should be able to see um, right here under the view menu where the killer plugins are, the plugin panel, short, shortcut K for killer plugins. Uh, that's where you'll see uh, different categories, and there's a miscellaneous category, and right here, doggy effects. Right. So double click that to launch it. And, and by the way, this, uh, oh, let me close that here. Uh, this killer plugins is actually a large panel. The panel has a lot of information about the different tools here, so I encourage you to read about that and uh, see when you installed it or when it was created or other things there. All right, so I'm going to go put that aside, launch it, and in Doggy FX, uh, you'll go down to Utilities. There's a lot of tools here. There's a lot of really interesting capabilities, but there's a Utilities category here, and in the Utilities, um, you have a couple of things. There's also a stored animations. This program actually was the first, uh, in my knowledge, that was uh, had the ability to store uh, a certain number of animations. Right now, our implementation for storing animation allows you to animate as many, uh, store as many as you want. Uh, as long as they fit in memory, you can store them in memory, uh, or it stores them to disk. But uh, this program already had something similar, up to four stored animations. Uh, and they are they can be used in some of the tools, right? So you can combine between the stored animation and the current animation. But um, anyway, going back to the the sprite sheets, there it is, animation to anim to sprite sheet, right? Take the current animation and convert that to sprite sheet. Um, and so, no surprise, double click that, um, and it figures out the best layout for that would be since there's a total of ten frames. Let's do that as a three by four. Um, so three rows and or rather four by three, right? Three rows and four columns. And you might want to be able to undo if you're not happy with the result. So check this box. We'll take extra disk space, apply, and voila, done. And you now have an animation that is converted to a sprite sheet. And of course, at that point, you might want to invert this, right? So there's filters here. Um, or or not, I mean, use the ones we have, and simply close this and say, let's go and, for instance, go to image and invert, and so now we have them on black, on white, and we still see that grid that we had enabled, right? Remember that visible grid? So that's something we probably will want to turn off now, and there it is. Uh, so now uh, there may also be some areas where there is a little bit of a glitchy edge condition, and uh, don't know if that's part of cell number nine or the next one. Should we care about it? I don't know. This, this is where you're going to want to, to erase it. If you're still using the rectangle fill tool, it's just about two seconds away and you fixed it. Right? So then you don't care about it. You don't care whether it's actually part of the image uh, that you'll see with cell number nine or cell at the bottom of cell number seven, or was it actually at the top of this last cell number 12? or 11. So um, at any rate, we now have an image sequence that we can save back out as a sprite sheet. And uh, that's a single PNG image or, or TIFF or, or JPEG, or whatever you need. Just go and save it. And that's that. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope this will be uh, useful for uh, those of you who are creating uh, sprites, animated uh, uh, image sequences as a single image file. Uh, there is obviously something else you'll probably also want to do, and that's to convert it or save it as an animated GIF. And so one way to do that actually is to take this array and uh, get it back as an animation, right? So uh, something like uh, right here, array to animation. And so we have four, we have three, and we have 10 
frames in all that we want to keep. So here's our animation again. And now we'd like to essentially save this as an animated GIF. So one thing you can do is go back to this uh, Killer Plugins, right? Dog EFX has a utility to save the current animation as an animated GIF, right here, Utilities, and you'll see the sprite sheet we used earlier. Um, and you can also combine, you can attach to a stored copy, you can do a couple of other things here. And there, there's a couple of uh, exports here, there's an export uh, transparent PNG to export to AnimGIF, there's also an MNG. Mm -hmm.